Before we get started, let's define what transitioning is. Transitioning is the words and phrases that you use to connect the different ideas in your academic writing. So they are phrases, for example, like furthermore or as this shows, um, but they're also small references within sentences. They could come anywhere in the sentence. They don't have to come at the beginning of a sentence that um, link to ideas that have been presented earlier or they sort of preview or link to ideas that are going to be brought up later in the essay. And they are a very critical component to the cohesion mark of your um, IELTS writing. So the public version of the band descriptors chart um, is succinct, it's very concise, and it's very clear on what um, cohesion should look like at the different bands. So if we look at the um, the box that's given for band 9, the clear language that's used is that cohesion um, is used in such a way that it attracts no attention. Today I thought as an exercise what we could do is look at a quick framework that I've um, pulled together that illustrates you know, a variety of ways um, that that ideas can be linked. Um, and it also fulfills this need for um, for linking ideas in a way that's not really noticeable by the reader. So they kind of just fluently link as you read through the text and it doesn't feel robotic or repetitive. So today we're uh, going to look at this essay question and an essay that I've written in response to this question. Um, so the question reads, do you feel the money governments spend to protect the environment would be better used elsewhere? Okay, and this is a question that was seen about a week ago, so it's, um, it's a very relevant um, topic. Now, I've, I've written an essay, and I have removed um, in this sort of skeleton the parts of the essay um, that don't really contribute to the to the cohesion of the essay. Okay, and what I've left here is just the language that allows the different sentences to work together. And so you'll sort of see that the language is, um, it, it works in two different ways. In one way, it will reflect upon information that's already been brought up and links to the information. So in, in essence, it links to the information that has come before. Um, in other ways, it will um, cue information to come or it, it will um, sort of, you know, provide a, a framework or a structure to the reader to allow them to anticipate certain, um, certain information to come. Now, let me just show you what I mean when I say that. So if we look at the very first sentence, okay? Uh, so we have here the world over typically. Now I'm just including that sort of as a, as a stock phrase that, that you could um, adopt and adapt into your own writing. But I mean, in this case, we're going to read governments the world over typically and then something. But then in, in the subsequent phrases, you see that the language sort of links back to what was brought up in the first sentence. So there are reasons to support and refute this practice. Now the specific word this um, so this uh, this word is obviously with reference to something that has been brought up before, and indeed, you know, we're talking about um, the practice that that you will see when the when the essay is fleshed out. Okay, so this is a a clear indicator of cohesion in this essay. Now the the final line says using examples from. And um, again, I, I'm including you know this just to show you kind of a, a stock phrase that you can you can adopt and adapt to your own writing. Um, so the sentence that you will see will say, using examples from my country, which is Canada, uh, I will discuss both positions before declaring a personal stance. So here, when I say I will discuss, okay, this is cueing the reader to indicate that um, I will be bringing up information that pertains to what was declared in this introduction paragraph. Now the both positions is with clear reference to the ideas that were brought up in the preceding sentences. Okay, and then again with before declaring a personal stance. So once again, this is creating cohesion because it lets the reader know that I am later in the essay going to be stating my um, personal position on this topic. So you can see how the, the introduction paragraph um, you know, in just between these two sentences does a lot to create cohesion between what we're going to be talking about in this essay. All right. 
Um, now let's go to the the first supporting paragraph. So a word like firstly is um, is helpful because it does indicate that there is going to be some sequencing to um, to the way that the ideas are introduced in this essay. Um, now we go through some some more kind of stock language. So for example, and then we carry on, you know, with ideas here. Um, so the phrase "for example" is is also, you know, it it, uh, it creates cohesion in that it's a phrase that is used. Um, to reference information that's been brought up already. So, you know, this topic that we're bringing up in the, in the, um, in the topic sentence of this paragraph um, now links into the next paragraph because we're queuing an example. And that's what this phrase does for us here. Okay, again, as well with such as. So again, the use of this and then with reference to information that has come before and um, just also some other transitional language here. Um, so comma, but it is also, and then I think we go into talking um, about an, another way in which the, the point that's been brought up, um, you know, supports the topic sentence. And more transitional language here. So uh, here in the third sentence, we're starting to derive or, or, or move towards, sorry, this is the fourth sentence, move towards the conclusion that we want the reader to walk away with after they finish reading this paragraph. Okay, so we have um, because such and then something are common among most countries it is clear why and then the ultimate conclusion that we want our um, um, reader to walk away with. Okay, now we move into um, a transition to looking at the you know the opposite point of view or an opposing point of view to what we were talking about in this in this first paragraph and so we're using the word however and so now you know when you look at this you can um, you can see that we're writing a, a discussion essay here so the following phrase is despite these benefits um, and now these benefits uh, is a phrase that of course references the 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 support that we brought up in the first supporting paragraph so this creates a very strong link between the two ideas and uh, this next sentence in and then blank so as you'll see in the essay it's in canada um, for example and then you know the the example is shared similar something can be seen so similar also cues the reader to making the link between this coming sentence and the sentence before it because it's it's comparing the two ideas together and it's and it's um, labeling them as being similar in nature okay and again we have transition language such as which uh, helps lead the the reader into uh, a tangible example and then we use thus and um, it is clear that and so all of this is leading to an, a conclusion that we're deriving from all of the information that we brought up in the in in this paragraph okay uh, the concluding paragraph following this examination what examination are we talking about of course this is linking back to the two supporting paragraphs that were brought up um, looking at both sides of this topic I support now this is not just a statement um, of our position, you know, just a, just a kind of out of left field statement of our position. As I pointed out earlier, we did make reference to this earlier in the in the essay. So, you know, when we said before declaring a personal stance. So, of course, this creates cohesion at the essay level. And um, and then so it carries on with but I strongly feel this. Um, so as you see, you will see in this essay, uh, I, I kind of straddle the position a little bit and, and um, provide a final opinion that is both in agreement and in disagreement with the stance, which I don't recommend you do. But I keep getting essays from people asking me to to write a tutorial about how to do that. So um, so I thought I'd, I'd, you know, I just for this one instance, um, in include this kind of essay. But as I've said in many other videos, it's much easier to either completely agree or completely disagree with your point of view. Then finally, this is um, so, of course, with reference to an idea that was brought up in the preceding sentence, and I hope to see it somewhere in the future, and, and this finishes off the essay um, with a, a recommendation or, or a hope. Okay, so you can see that these different um, phrases and language patterns really do help link the ideas together um, at three different levels, really. I mean, you're, you're linking things within, um, within sentences, um, you're linking paragraphs, together and you are linking ideas at the full essay level so the entire thing works as one large cohesive unit 
Okay, so uh, now let's get to the activity. So this is an activity I've done with you before. So basically, we're going to go through the essay and flesh this out. So you'll see the other the uh, the actual language that fits into these blanks. Um, so you'll see a sentence come up on the screen, and then I will delete it, and then three versions of that sentence will uh, be presented to you. And I'd like you to choose the sentence that you you originally read. Okay, and so my hope is that in um, exposing you to these sentences and pushing you to try to remember each of the words that you will commit, um, you know, accurate grammatical structures to memory. And in, in, uh, in today's case, especially um, accurate cohesion at the band nine level. Okay, structures that will allow you to be cohesive at the band nine level. So let's start. So the first sentence in our essay reads, governments the world over typically allocate a portion of their spending to preserving the environment of their respective countries. All right, and if I take this sentence away, now let's look at uh, three sentences, and you can choose the one that you just saw. Governments the world over tend to allocate a portion of their spending to preserving the environment of their respective countries. Governments the world over typically allocate a portion of their spending to preserving the environment of their respective countries. Governments the world over typically designate a portion of their spending to preserving the environment of their respective countries. And the sentence you saw originally was this second sentence. Okay, and as with the other activity, um, all of the sample sentences that I'm sharing are grammatically correct, but it's just an exercise to sort of um, push you to um, repeat certain um, phrases over and over again so that you can reproduce them in your own writing. So the second sentence we're looking at is there are reasons to support and refute this practice. Okay, let's take that sentence away. All right, and let's go to uh, these three sentences. So please choose the one you just saw. There are reasons to support and refute this practice. There are reasons to support and refute this. There are many reasons to support and refute this practice. Okay, and the sentence you just saw was the first one here. So let's go and punch that into our essay. All right, now the third sentence. Using examples from my country, I will discuss both positions before declaring a personal stance. Okay, and we will get rid of that. All right. Using examples from my country, I will analyze both positions before declaring a personal stance. Using examples from my country, I will discuss both positions before declaring a personal stance. Using examples from my country, I will discuss both sides before declaring a personal stance. And the sentence you saw was sentence number two. that into our essay. Okay. And the uh, first sentence of our um, first supporting paragraph. Firstly, government funded protection of a country's environment is beneficial for many reasons. Okay, let's remove that. All right. So which of these did you see? Uh, firstly, government-funded protection of a nation's environment is beneficial for many reasons. Firstly, government-funded protection of a country's environment is helpful for many reasons. Firstly, government-funded protection of a country's environment is beneficial for many reasons. And the answer here is the third sentence. So let's go and put that into our essay. Okay. All right, and let's pull up the next sentence here. Next one's a bit on, uh, a bit long. For example, in my country, the Canadian government has spent a tremendous amount of money to ensure large swaths of land, such as Algon Algonquin Park in Ontario, are inaccessible to resource-hungry companies and city sprawl. Okay, and let's remove 
that sentence. Now, can you choose that from these three examples? And I hope I can fit them all here. For example, in my country, the Canadian government continues to spend tremendous amounts of money to ensure large swaths of land, such as Algonquin Park in Ontario, are inaccessible to resource-hungry companies and city sprawl. For example, in my country, the Canadian government has spent a tremendous amount of money to ensure large swaths of land, such as Algonquin Park in Ontario, are protected from resource-hungry companies and city sprawl. For example, in my country, the Canadian government has spent a tremendous amount of money to ensure large swaths of land, such as Algonquin Park in Ontario, are inaccessible to resource-hungry companies and city sprawl. And the sentence you saw was this third one here. So let's go put that into our essay. Okay, let me pull up the next one. This policy is important because it not only ensures the natural beauty and wildlife of, Can of Canada are maintained for future generations, but it also preserves Canadian identity, which is tied closely to the vastness and untainted nature of the land. All right, let's remove that. And let's look at these sentences. I don't think I'll be able to fit them all. This policy is important because it not only ensures the natural beauty and wildlife of Canada are maintained for future generations, but it also preserves Canadian identity, which is tied closely to the vastness and untainted nature of the land. This policy is critical because it not only ensures the natural beauty and wildlife of Canada are maintained for future generations, but it also preserves Canadian identity, which is tied closely to the vastness and untainted nature of the land. This policy is important because it not only ensures the natural beauty and wildlife of Canada are maintained for future generations, but it also preserves Canadian identity, which is tied closely to the vastness and unpolluted nature of the land. And the sentence you saw was the first sentence here. Okay. Let's pull up another one. Because such values are common among most countries, it is clear why many people the world over support government-funded protection of the environment. All right, and we'll remove that and read through these three. Because such values are held by most countries, it is clear why many people the world over support government-funded protection of the environment. Because such values are common among most countries, it is clear why many people the world over support government-funded protection of the environment. Because such values are common among most countries, it is obvious why many people the world over support government-funded protection of the environment. And the answer here is number two. Okay, and we're going to look at the first sentence of um, the second supporting paragraph now. So let's pull that up. Okay. However, despite these benefits, reallocating such funding to other needs has undeniable merit. Okay, and we'll take that sentence away. However, despite these benefits, distributing this funding to other needs has undeniable merit. However, despite these benefits, reallocating such funding to other needs has undeniable merit. However, despite these benefits, reallocating such funding to alternative needs has undeniable merit. 
And the sentence you saw, sentence number two. So let's go and put that in our essay. Okay, now let's look at the next sentence. Another long one. In Canada, for example, preserving the integrity of the environment seems somewhat hypocritical when so many First Nations peoples who have been historically driven off the land are in need of resources that allow them to preserve and pass on their languages and cultures to their descendants. Okay, let's get rid of that sentence. All right, can you choose it from this list? In Canada, for example, preserving sections of the environment seems somewhat hypocritical when so many First Nations peoples who have historically, who have been historically driven off the land are in need of resources that allow them to preserve and pass on their languages and cultures to their descendants. In Canada, for example, preserving the integrity of the environment seems somewhat hypocritical when so many First Nations peoples who have been historically driven off the land are in need of resources that allow them to preserve and pass on their languages and customs to their descendants. In Canada, for example, preserving the integrity of the environment seems somewhat hypocritical when so many First Nations peoples who have historically been who have been historically driven off the land are in need of resources that allow them to preserve and pass on their languages and cultures to their descendants. Okay, and the sentence you saw was the third sentence. Okay, let's carry on here. Similar needs can be seen among the native populations of other nations formed out of the colonial period, such as the United States and Australia. Okay, let's look at these three. Similar needs can be seen among the native populations of other nations formed out of the colonial period, such as the United States and Australia. Similar needs can be seen among the native populations of other countries formed out of the colonial period, such as the United States and Australia. Similar needs can be seen among the native populations of other nations that derive from the colonial period, such as the United States and Australia. Okay, and the sentence you saw was the first one. Okay, and let's pull up the final sentence in this paragraph. Thus, it is clear that for select countries, government funding may be better channeled to the preservation of not only the land, but also its indigenous peoples. Okay, and we will remove that. All right. Thus, it is clear that for certain countries, government funding may be better channeled to the preservation of not only the land, but also its indigenous peoples. Thus, it is clear that for select countries, government funding may not, uh, excuse me, may be better channeled towards the preservation of not only the land, but also its indigenous peoples. Thus, it is clear that for select countries, government funding may be better channeled to the preservation of not only the land, but also its indigenous peoples. And the sentence you saw is this third one. Okay, and that closes the, um, the second supporting paragraph. Now let's go to the conclusion uh, paragraph, the first sentence of the conclusion paragraph. Following this examination, I support the government-funded preservation of a country's environment, but I strongly feel this funding should also be directed to promoting the health of other Aboriginal facets, namely the cultures and languages of a nation's Indigenous peoples.
All right, and let's choose that sentence from this list. Following this examination, I support the government-funded preservation of a country's environment, but I strongly feel this funding should also be directed to promoting the well-being of other Aboriginal facets, namely the cultures and languages of a nation's Indigenous peoples. Following this examination, I support the government-funded preservation of a country's environment, but I strongly feel this money should also be directed to promoting the health of other Aboriginal facets, namely the cultures and languages of a nation's Indigenous peoples. Following this examination, I support the government-funded preservation of a country's environment, but I strongly feel this funding should also be directed to promoting the health of other Aboriginal facets, namely the cultures and languages of a nation's Indigenous peoples. And the version you saw is this third version. So let's insert this. Okay, and we have one more sentence to get through. Let me bring it up here. Okay. This is a much more holistic approach to environmental preservation, and I hope to see it adopted by countries around the world. All right, and I will re remove this sentence. Oops. Okay. So which of these three sentences did you see? This is a much more holistic approach to environmental preservation, and I trust it will be adopted by countries around the world. This is a much more holistic approach to environmental preservation, and I hope to see it adopted by countries around the world. This is a much more holistic approach to environmental presentation, and I hope to see it used by countries around the world. And the answer here is sentence number two. Okay, so that completes the essay. Um, so I'm going to read through it from top to bottom, and um, I hope that you were able to pick out some of the different um, phrasing that I introduced to you in the beginning of the lesson that allows the various sentences to um, to work together um, and you know create cohesion at these different levels um, of writing. So from the beginning, this piece reads. Governments the world over typically allocate a portion of their spending to preserving the environment of their respective countries. There are reasons to support and refute this practice. Using examples from my country, I will discuss both positions before declaring a personal stance. Firstly, government-funded protection of a country's environment is beneficial for many reasons. For example, in my country, the Canadian government has spent a tremendous amount of money to ensure large swaths of land, such as Algonquin Park in Ontario, are inaccessible to resource-hungry companies and city sprawl. This policy is important because it not only ensures the natural beauty and wildlife of Canada are maintained for future generations, but it also preserves Canadian identity, which is tied closely to the vastness and untainted nature of the land. Because such values are common among most countries, it is clear why many people the world over support government-funded protection of the environment. However, despite these benefits, reallocating such funding to other needs has undeniable merit. In Canada, for example, preserving the integrity of the environment seems somewhat hypocritical when so many First Nations peoples, who have been historically driven off the land, are in need of resources that allow them to preserve and pass on their languages and cultures to their descendants. Similar needs can be seen among native populations of other nations formed out of the colonial period, such as the United States and Australia. Thus, it is clear that for select countries, government funding may be better channeled to the, pres the preservation of not only the land, but also its indigenous peoples. Following this examination, I support gov uh, the government-funded preservation of a country's environment, but I strongly feel this funding should also be directed to promoting the health of other Aboriginal facets, namely the cultures and languages of a nation's indigenous peoples. This is a much more holistic approach to environmental preservation, and I hope to see it adopted by um, countries around the world. Okay, so as you saw, every one of those sentences links to some other part of the essay. So it's sort of like this this some um, fluent, cohesive whole. And because there isn't 
um, you know, any mechanical repetition of um, of the cohesive devices, it reads very fluently. And um, and for the examiner who's reading through this, this would fulfill their need um, for it to be labeled a piece that uses cohesion in such a way that it attracts no attention. It's just a very fluent sort of um, interconnected piece of work. So I hope that uh, that quick lesson was helpful um, and that um, the points that I, I, I made were, were clear and that you feel that you could use some of um, these, these linking items, these transitional p uh, parts in your own writing. And I encourage you to adopt them and adapt them and try to, you know, experiment with them until they become, you know, natural um, within your own writing style as well. Of course, you're welcome to come and post any um, practice IELTS piece that you would like to receive feedback on to IELTSnetwork.com. Um, you can expect to receive some, some feedback on your grammar, on your structure there. So I look forward to hearing from you soon. You can always email me at ryan at IELTSielts.com or uh, send me a message at IELTS Network on Twitter. I love receiving success stories, so um, please get in contact and let me know the successes that you've had with the IELTS and um, the part that these um, these videos may have, have played in that. I really do like, like receiving your, your messages about that. Thanks very much and see you next video.